My name is Mark Johnson of Name of the Lord 777 Ministries. I'd like to introduce my wife, Mary Grace, and our children, Akia and Joy Joy. Today, I'd like to discuss a very important subject. Who are your enemies during the end times? As a Christian, we believe all battles are spiritual in nature before they manifest themselves physically. Satan has a trinity of himself, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. God has a godly trinity of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you call him, he is the prince of this world. Today it is my goal to make a case for Obama being the Antichrist. As my second goal, I'd like to make the case for Pope Francis being the false prophet. My third goal today is to explain how President Obama, the Antichrist, and Pope Francis, the false prophet, are just puppets for people we define as the Ashkenazi Jews, which, more simplified, are the Rothschild family and their accomplices. In 70 AD, Jerusalem was attacked, the Christians fled to Turkey, and the Jews, many of them, fled to a country called Georgia, south of Russia, the Khazars. The Khazars eventually converted to Judaism in 740 AD due to a king's edict. However, in the Jewish race, you must have a Jewish father. Most of these individuals just had a Jewish mother. Therefore, they're truly not Jewish in the sense of the religion. After much study, it's clear to me that the Rothschild family and the Ashkenazi Jews are one and the same. It's also clear to me that the end times revolves around the Rothschild Jews who are trying to take over the world. Allow me to read Revelation 2.9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Ecclesiastes states there is nothing new under the sun. The devil has just recreated his age-old plan to control the world using fake Jews. The Nazis tried this in World War II. They tried to do Satan's job and kill the Jews, and they failed miserably. The Ashkenazi Jews are really not Jews, but only in name and convenience. They have attempted to take over the world many times so far and failed. However, in 2015, they have the perfect storm. They will try to take over in September and eventually kill 6.5 billion people. Billion with a B. Mayor Anshel Rothschild. Care not who writes their laws. 17. Rothschilds get control of America's money. A traitor in the George Washington's cabinet by the name of Alexander Hamilton was an agent for the Rothschilds. When they set up a central bank in the USA, called it the first bank of the United States, this is established with a 20-year charter. It's a lesson. Bring them a war. In 1811 1814, Rothschild's attorneys lobbied and tried to force their way into American courts to effect the Rothschild Central Bank. As a result, sufficient states in Congress approved the original, now missing, 13th Amendment, which barred anyone claiming an honor or allegiance to a foreign citizen in the United States. The original 13th Amendment approved by sufficient states just before the war broke out. See the original missing 13th Amendment. Prior to 911, there were seven countries that didn't have a Rothschild bank. Now it's down to three. We could even add Syria to that and make it four. Do you see the connection? 
the Rothschilds are willing to make World War III happen, with G7 representing the West and BRICS representing the East, it looks like they're going to divide along Rothschild bank lines. It looks like a showdown is coming with nuclear warheads. The New World Order is just a generic term used by the world to explain a conspiracy to control the world by a group of genetically related individuals and very wealthy friends. Let me state clearly the New World Order objectives. Abolish all ordered governments. Abolish private property. Abolish inheritance. Abolish patriotism. Abolish family. Abolish religion. And all to create a one world government. If the BRICS nations decide not to go to World War III, and submit to the Rothschilds, this is what the world will look like. It looks a bit like the Hunger Games, all separated apart for the Rothschilds to control. All over the world, nations have been giving up sovereignty so that they can have free trade zones, which look just like the zones in the Hunger Games. President Lincoln and President Kennedy both had one thing in common. They fought the Rothschild Bank and threw it out, and they gave their life for that cause. Don't we owe them something? The Rothschilds control the Vatican Bank, therefore they control the Vatican. I believe Pope Francis is the false prophet. His role in all this is to bring about a one world religion, which worships the one world Antichrist, and I believe the Antichrist is President Obama. We will know more in September. The Pope is busy flattering every religion. He is telling the Muslims that their God is the same as the Catholics. The Catholics God is the same as the Evangelicals. He will soon merge the Buddhist and the Hindu in the New Age, all pushing them to atheism and eventually move to his God. Lucifer. In order for the Rothschild to achieve the world takeover goal, they must control all facets of society. Therefore, they have developed many, many secret organizations to accomplish this, as you can see by this convoluted chart. Jesuit Pope Francis in September, I believe, will promote homosexual gay marriage as normal and biblical. Soon to follow will be pedophile activity as normal and uncriminal. The New World Order or Rothschilds got so brazen in 1980 they built their own Ten Commandments in Georgia in America. They stated their number one goal was to maintain humanity below 500 million which means they will kill 6.5 billion people as their number one commandment. In order to kill that many people, they will have to control America's military, which they do now. They will also control the CIA and the Jewish CIA called Mossad, which has a motto, by the way of deception, thou shalt make war. They will also use false flags in order to kill people. Watch and learn. Mossad acts as a Rothschild CIA. Their motto is, By the way of deception thou shalt make war. Edward Snowden, an NSA defector to Russia, has made it clear with all the evidence that 911 was an inside job caused by Mossad. 
Mossad is the Israel Intelligence Agency, or if you will, the Rothschild Intelligence Agency. The Rothschilds have developed the concept of false flags in order to cause chaos in the world, such as race wars, ISIS, Ebola. Then they force you to look towards the United Nations, which they control, to solve those problems. They know that you will give up freedom in order to have peace. Can you see the Hunger Games developing here? The Rothschilds want you, but only as a slave. How come no one knows about this Rothschild manipulation? Well, you need to look no further than CBS, CNN. All the news companies are owned by the Rothschild Jews. Wake up, America. Prior to 9-1-1, seven countries were without a Rothschild bank. Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, Syria, North Korea, Iran. As of 2012, there are only three left. Syria, North Korea, Iran. This is truly a false flag. The Ashkenazi Jews, or fake Jews, Rothschild Jews, if you will, trying to kill God's people, the real Jews. Obama always lies. Jade Helm 15 is a takeover. If you don't believe it, keep your doctor. Henry Kissinger stated clearly, Obama's job is to bring about the new world order. He is going to create a Hunger Games environment where race wars are the name of the game. White on black hate, white on Spanish, Spanish on black, all throughout American cities. Bill Gates has funded the Ebola virus development and release. This is just a false flag to cause fear. The Ashkenazi Jews have been masterful in their attempt to take over the world using secret organizations, using the media, and using science, anything to tear apart people's faith in Christ. But we know Christ will return. Why do you think the Catholics need a white pope and a black pope? Well, the white pope is for show, to show Christendom, but the black pope is to do the dirty deeds. He runs the Jesuit order. The Rothschild-controlled Catholics have set up a group called the Jesuits. They have an unstated goal to take over Jerusalem, kill real Christianity through subversion, i.e. the pre-tribulation. They also have a subversive policy of having a white pope who says hail Jesus and a black pope behind the scenes who uses witchcraft and hails Lucifer. The Jesuits number one job is to hide homosexuals and pedophiles inside the church. That's why they're a perfect match with the sexual perverse Rothschild family. When the Rothschilds are rumored to have over 50% of the world's wealth, it's easy to own all the media outlets and control all information. To help recognize who is being controlled by the New World Order or the Rothschilds, you can see the symbol of the pyramid on our dollar bill, which is one of their favorites, the 666 of course, and then the all-seeing eye, the flame, the uh, snake eating his tail, and Baphomet. There are so many symbols. You just have to open your eyes. The pyramid is their favorite. The obelisk, the Washington Monument, the double cross, the lightning bolt, the owl, the skull and bones, the double-headed eagle, the pyramid with the hands, the triple six with the finger, the checkerboard square, the monarch, the umbrella, the bird cage and the rainbow are all favorites that show allegiance to the New World Order. The Rothschilds have poured millions of dollars into Bruce Jenner with operations and monarch mind control to make him want to become a woman, to grow breasts, to cut out his atom sap, to cut off his penis. Wow, what depths and what sexual perversion the New World Order and the Rothschilds have gone.
to make a poster child like Bruce Jenner. Science said that it could explain life by evolution. That turned out to be a lie. Now they're trying to explain life by finding the God particle in the CERN 666 project. Science has clearly proven that all mankind came from one female, Eve. I wonder when they're going to admit it came from one male, Adam. The Ashkenazi Rothschild Jews have 50% of the world's wealth and own many corporations with their uh, accomplices. They have American Airlines, McDonald's, Monsanto, Dole, Bill Gates owns Microsoft, we could go on and on. Corporations, by their mandate, are to be greedy for their shareholders and to make money. The Rothschilds have 50% of the wealth in the world. Therefore, they own many, many corporations, and many, many corporations show their allegiance, showing 666 or other symbols of the Illuminati in their logos. I will now take time to show you that the Ashkenazi Jews will take over the world after September 2015. We're going to look at a history lesson about Hitler and look at the parallels with Obama. The temporary solution is we can pray fast and peacefully revolt. The Ashkenazi Jews are just Nazis wanting to steal, kill, and destroy you. Does that sound familiar? This is Obama's stage at the Democratic Nominating Convention in Denver in 2008, designed to look like a Greek temple. It's strange enough that Obama made a temple his stage, a place of worship, but Obama's nomination temple appears to be modeled after the Pergamon altar, a special place. This is a Pergamon altar, which is on display at the Pergamon Museum in Berlin, Germany, only a few hundred yards from the place where Obama gave a speech a couple of months before the convention. The Pergamon altar is special because it is mentioned in the biblical book of Revelation and is called in Revelation the seat or throne of Satan. The Greek god Zeus and pagan idols were worshipped at Pergamon. However, more importantly, Caesar Augustus, the ruler of Rome, was worshipped as a god at Pergamon. An early Christian named Antipas was sacrificed there because he refused to worship the pagan gods of Pergamon. Antipas was burned alive at this altar inside a hollow bronze bull. Hitler's architect, Albert Speer, also modeled the Tribune at the Zeppelin Field in Nuremberg after the Pergamon altar. This fact is mentioned in the documentary film, The Architecture of Doom. This is the Zeppelin field at Nuremberg, one of the sites where Hitler had his National Reichstag rallies. Hitler also sacrificed 10 million Christians as well as Jews by gassing and burning them to death. Obama's temple looks even more like the Pergamon altar than Hitler's did. Obama is the most prominent follower of the radical anarchist Saul Alinsky. Alinsky dedicated his book, Rules for Radicals, to Lucifer. It is a textbook for revolutionary radical activists, and Lucifer was the first revolutionary, as Alinsky points out. Remember, if Jesus is for you, who can be against you? We have many. We have 6.5 billion people, and the Rothschilds have very few. They are worried about us. Just remember, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Remember, in Nazi Germany, six million Jews gave their lives and four million Christians. The Ashkenazi Jews planned to kill 6.5 billion people. That's something we can't be quiet about. Let us remember Proverbs 29.9. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule it, the people mourn. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can.
Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you, say. 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 You might ask, why would I do such a crazy thing as take on the richest, most powerful man in the world, a proven murderer, pedophile, dishonest, gangster? Why would I do such a stupid thing? Well, I don't have an option. Christ says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. In 1861, President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States from 1860 to his assassination in 1865, approaches the big banks. But they want 24% interest to 36% interest on all monies loaned to fund the Civil War. Lincoln's very angry about the high level of interest, so he prints his own debt-free money and informs the public that this is now legal tender for both public and private debts. With Later that year, on April 14th, President Lincoln is assassinated less than two months. In 1881, President James A. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, who lasted only 100 days because he died in office. However, control of the volume of money in our country is absolute master. By a few powerful men at the top, you will not have to be told. Government plan in 1850. The last and current Central Bank of America, the Federal Reserve, is set up during the presidency of Woodrow Wilson. Wilson later regretted it. John F. Kennedy recognized the threat of the Federal Reserve and decided to issue $2 and $5 notes. Backed by silver. On November 22nd, 1963, Kennedy is assassinated. Primarily on covet means. It's a buried, not headlined. Its descent is a silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be. I love the Jewish people, but APEC stands for all that's wrong in America. The Ashkenazi Jews manipulate every politician in America. The New World Order and the Rothschild Jews clearly represent their religion by showing that they love sun worship and that is the purpose of the symbol of the obelisk and now they're building a 300 billion dollar billion with a B city in the new Cairo the land of the pyramid I propose a five-pronged, biblically-based solution, starting with prayer and fasting, followed by wearing sackcloth and using peaceful revolt of the masses. Remember, we have 6.5 billion they want dead. Next, we wait patiently for the permanent solution, and that is Jesus' return. Iceland has already showed that you can take the gangsters from the banks and put them in jail and you can return your country to a healthy economy. We must act now or America is doomed.
for this temporary solution, we must start today with a peaceful revolt. If we wait until September, it will be too late to save America. In September, Obama and the Pope Francis will declare gay marriage biblical. And that will, I believe, will become the abomination of desolation. And he will then go to the United Nations, that is Pope Francis, and he will declare all nations to be submissive to the United Nations. Just as in Jesus' time, there will be martyrdom for standing for Christ. We must remember Revelation 12.10. They did not love their lives so much as to not shrink from death. However, there is bad news. For those who accept the 666 and reject Christ, all will be judged. If your name is not written in the book of life, you will be thrown in the lake of fire for eternity. Jesus will come back with the sound of trumpets all over the world. He will come in the clouds and be accompanied by the lightning. Look in the air for your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus returns, it won't be a pretty sight. Many will die and many Ashkenazi Jews that don't repent will die in their tracks. Many Gentiles that don't repent will die in their tracks. He will return and he will take vengeance on the wicked. Without getting into the details of what a tetrad is, and I suggest strongly you go to the name of the Lord 777.com and learn exactly what a tetrad is. Well, let's look at some events in the skies from the heavens, God's warning that He's coming back. There was a solar eclipse that occurred on March 20th, 2015. This was a marker for the Jews. On March 19th, 2015, Netanyahu won a bitter battle against his liberal opponent. That liberal opponent was funded with $300 million from the U.S. taxpayers given to him by yours truly, the Antichrist, Obama. With a meek heart and a humble spirit, I come before you today to show you what God showed me. In September of this year, 2015, I believe you'll see the abomination of desolation which will take place in three phases. First, on September 13th, we'll see the financial collapse orchestrated by Obama and the Rothschild. Second, on September 28th, you'll see Pope Francis travel to the United Nations. He'll give a speech before the, the Open Council, and he will promote the United Nations taking control of all world governments in the name of climate control. September 28th, Pope Francis will get in a plane and go to New York City. He will speak at the United Nations. He will promote control of the world's governments by the United Nations in the name of climate control. Third, he will on September 29th get back in his plane and fly to the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, and he'll speak at a family conference. Remember, Philadelphia is the only church that God did not condemn. And He, the Holy One, will declare gay marriage to be from the Bible. Isn't that the abomination, the final abomination of September? In the name of the Lord, 777 Ministries wants to thank you for doing the enemies of the end time study. It is our prayer. You will be wise and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and join us in heaven for a thousand year reign and then we will all return to the earth in the new heaven and the new earth. Amen.